Right, hello and welcome to part 21. I can check on the fucking thing now, which is good. Uh, so today on my Hotline Miami clone in Unity tutorial, we are going to be doing the little cutscenes that you see in Hotline Miami. So I'll just quickly show you it. That's pretty much it. It'll just say it and say text and there is animation on it. So I'll show you that. I'll just basically explain how it works. So. Uh, We've got test cutscene, well, which is just default name that I did. Uh, we've got two scripts for this. We've got a cutscene display, which is the main, like, it shows the GUI, and a cutscene bit, which in retrospect is a horrible name, but that basically stores the faces used in the cutscene, the like cutscene or little text bit, and the actual text. So as you can see on there, it's got a public texture 2D array which stores all the faces so you can have an animation if you want, like the mouth moving and blinking and etc. and the text for the thing, whatever you want to say. So uh, this is a cutscene test and it's still just a test. So now we'll go on to the code. Cutscene container, literally just public texture 2D faces and public string text so you can assign all this in the inspector so and you can just have it as a child game object of the actual uh, thing that it's on just to keep it nice and neat. And yeah, that's just that. And on cutscene display, we've got uh, an array of all uh, the uh, cutscene container bits, which is actually what it's called, which makes more sense. I don't know why cutscene bit was on there, but whatever. I probably named it weirdly. So this is basically all the like bits of the cutscene. So say one person talks, so they'll say. Uh, like one little bit of text that will appear, then you press enter, then another bit of it does. Each time you press enter, it cycles through an array of these, assigning it to the active cutscene. So this is done in input control. So it'll just assign the currently active cutscene is the cutscene bits, cutscene counter, which is counter that cycles through the array. And if you press enter, or well, the return key, uh, if it's not reached the end of the cutscene bits array, so this is this uses length minus one because of how arrays work. They start at zero, but length starts at one. Then it'll cycle through it. But if it reaches the end, it'll stop. It'll re resume the game. So it sets time scale to one, which is used to pause and unpause the game. It'll destroy this game object, so it can't be triggered. The cutscene can't be triggered again. And it'll set any cutscene display to false. And this is just any cutscene displaying is a static boolean which is basically just used by the score controller, the GUI, and I believe the player health as well. Yep. Uh, no, not player health. Uh, which one was it? Uh, it's a score controller. Oh, yeah, it's the ammo uh, weapon controller, wherever that is. So the weapon controller and the score controller use the cutscene uh, display, Any use any cutscene displaying to... So it'll not draw the ammo and score counters over the cutscene bit. Which is just a simple fix, really, for that problem. Uh, let's see, this is just the animate face. Basically, it'll cycle through the array of faces on currently uh, on uh, active cutscene and assign them to active face, which is then drawn and on GUI. Even if you just have the one face, like I had there, it'll work fine. It'll just keep going one, 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 and keep saying it's zero. So no bugs there, I hope. And yeah, so this is how we activate the uh, cutscene. So I say cutscene, it's not really cutscene, it's follow up, just text, but whatever. Uh, it basically checks if the players collided with the trigger on the test cutscene game object. So as you can see, it's like a trigger just to get at the player as they start a the level. And if I go back to the script, it'll just say it'll set displaying to true, which will allow it to display the GUI. Uh, set time to time scale to zero, which pauses the game, and sets the cutscene displaying static ball to true, which allows stops the score controller and weapon ammo showing. And basically, what this does is it draws a texture, the background texture, which is just uh, this where well, I mocked up and multi it's just drawn at the screen size because this is just basically the screen size divided by 10. So it's 1982 by 10, 8 or something. 
And yeah, that's basically just my screen size divided by 10. It'll work the same. And yeah. Then it draws the face, which is just drawn on the white section, which is this rect here. It'll draw the active face. So, And then it draws the text. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And we've got the GUI scaling stuff just here. And a GUI style just to make the text look all right, I guess. This is just the GUI. This is the text stuff. So uh, I've got font size 30. Word wrap basically means if it reaches the edge of the container you defined. So I've got a thousand pixels wide container here. If it reaches the edge, it'll start a new line rather than just continuing on. And yeah, I've uh, got alignment, uh, change the text color, and that's about it. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. We also did a few, uh, I did a few bug fixes with regards to the like level controls. So on level escape controller, it now take, finds all the different types of enemies because they've all got different tags. So dogs, heavies, and enemies. And basically creates and puts them in the array enemies by using the copy to method. So basically just copies them in at the end of the array. Oh God, I should have done that. Uh, yeah. And it'll basically enemies now will contain all of the three different types of enemies. So for, it'll be able to recognize when all the enemies are dead, not just the generic enemies that can pick up weapons. And for the elevators, if you do add new enemies like I have, so I did the dog and the heavy to the ground floor, you'll have to change the elevator script to make sure that it can uh, recognize when all the enemies are dead. So if you didn't do that, it would just let you use the elevator when you'd left enemies that you'd added, but added to the level, but not added to the elevator script. So yeah, I hope that made sense. Uh, is there anything else I've not covered? Oh, I added, uh, basically it just changes the game object tag to dead, because I didn't add for when you kill dogs, just so that it, uh, the level escape controller will be able to realize that it had died. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, this is the cutscene display. So the rest of it, uh, that's pretty much it. Score controller, weapon attack. Uh, yeah, play loud or quiet. The link is in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm almost at the end of this tutorial now. I might go over some of the AI just to make the it a bit better and closer to what it actually is in Hotline Miami. But other than that, I think we're pretty much close to done. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Got questions, ask them. Bye.